case discussion of endogyny training quiz number 13 which uh, i had posted in the group and uh, as you know we had we were discussing laparoscopic myomectomy for a true broad ligament fibroid and this is the image which i had posted in the group so uh, this was the image that we were talking about and before we get to the discussion of the image again let us uh, have our standard disclaimer that uh, medicine is not an exact science so these are my personal opinions they may be different from conventional teaching but if you have any comments please leave them in the comment section below the video and we will be happy to discuss them in the group and for those of you who have not yet joined i would really welcome you to join the group by visiting the website endogynetraining.com where there is a whatsapp link to join our discussion group so you too can take part in the voting and the discussion you can express your own views about the management of the case and then when we discuss the case you can cross check whether or not you were right to begin with of course any difference of opinion is most welcome so this is the uh, image that i had posted and you can see that the uterus is seen as a small bulge in the center <clears throat> the right broad ligament fibroid is stretching the uh, right adnexa the round ligament is stretched over it and the right fallopian tube is also stretched over the mass seen on the top one can also see another uh, small subserous fibroid which is being seen and uh, that of course is not of any major consequence to us but it still will be need to be taken out anyway so this is the smaller fibroid which needs to be taken out so with that let us move on to the uh, next slide and the case discussion questions were the first question was is laparoscopic surgery safe for this fibroid so majority of the people have answered yes and i think that is correct uh, this fibroid or any other oddly located fibroid uh, is a safe bet for doing laparoscopic surgery except maybe for fibroids which are very very large in size and occupy the entire abdomen and pelvis in which case a laparotomy might be better of course this will change with the experience and the skill of the surgeon and some patient specific factors as well but for by and large for this particular fibroid i would Im imagine that laparoscopic surgery can be said to be perfectly safe now the second question uh, is a little debatable would you like to ask for ureteric stenting and most of the people have said yes 48.3 percent have said yes 25% have said no and 26% uh, have said that only if the pre-op ultrasound shows extrinsic ureteric compression. So this is a little difficult to uh, answer. I will present my views on this particular thing. As such, I would go in this particular situation with the photograph that was posted, I would go with no. It is not required for the simple reason that first of all, uh, the fibroid is a broad ligament fibroid which means that it is going to remain close to the ureter but may or may not essentially kink the ureter. Uh, the easy part about dissecting a broad ligament fibroid is once you have incised the leaf of the broad ligament and reached up to the fibroid even if you cannot do any ureteric dissection at all and you can just keep slowly pushing the tissues away from the fibroid, you are very, very unlikely to be able to hit the ureter. Of course, you never know unless it is a pseudo broad ligament versus a true broad ligament fibroid where the location of the ureter may change. So yes, you can have a visualization of the ureter, but to ask for ureteric stenting in this case as a protocol, I don't think would be required. Then coming to the last option, only if the pre-op USG shows extrinsic compression. Now as such, the pre-operative ultrasound is showing extrinsic compression because of the presence of the fibroid. So I would imagine that there is the ureter running over here and that there is a fibroid which is sitting right on top of the ureter like this because of which there is some compression over the ureter. Once the fibroid is removed, the 
extrinsic compression will go away easily and so so even if the preoperative usg shows extrinsic compression i would don't think i would really want a ureteric stenting preoperatively at the most you may keep a urologist on standby to do the compression if you think uh, to do the stenting if you think your dissection has gone very close to the ureter or there has been some devascularization of the ureter but as such i don't think there will be any role of ureteric compression in this uh, ureteric stenting in this case so let's look at the next slide then uh, is retroperitoneal dissection to delineate the uterine artery uh, required uterine artery and a uterine artery ligation required in this particular case so that was actually the question and a uh, majority of the people have answered yes again i will not agree with the majority in this case because like i said a very large so you have two situations one is where there is a large fibroid and another situation probably where you have got a large endometrioma now the typical difference between these two things that one needs to understand is that the fibroid will always push the ureter away so though they may be in proximity once traction is exerted on the fibroid and the fibroid is pulled up the ureter will fall down automatically conversely in the case of an endometrioma the same relation may exist but when the endometrioma is pulled up or when there is a dissection uh, which is being done what will happen is that there will be adhesions between the ureter and the endometrioma and so the ureter will get pulled up and so there is a much higher chance of damaging the ureter both are adnexal masses both the fibroid as well as the endometrioma are adnexal masses but the chances of ureteric injury are much more in this particular situation as compared to this situation where the ureteric injury will not happen so to cut a long story short i think a retroperitoneal dissection for all cases so in order to avoid controversy i may write here for all cases and even for the case Uh, which i have posted in the group i think i would go with no retroperitoneal dissection and uterine artery ligation is not necessary in this particular case and uh, this i think only ureter I, i'm not sure i think i posted some wrong uh, uh, this thing for selection also but this is an invalid um, entry which is there over here so i would go with no but yes of course you can choose to stent the ureter to choose to delineate the ureter and uterine artery ligation can be done but i think in every single case this may not be required you may choose to just delineate the ureter by taking a look at where the ureter is and its relation to the mass but a full ureteric dissection or a uterine artery ligation in all cases in my opinion is really not required so we move on to the next question which was asked i'm sorry this was the next slide so yeah so would you like to suture the defect or to leave it open again this i think is a mistake that i have made and i have given a yes or no answer rather than a suture or not suture but uh, let's assume that people who have said yes means they mean that they will suture and people who have said no that means that they will not suture so i would uh, majority of the times the dictum is to not suture the defect because the broad ligament fibroid if it is actually a true broad ligament fibroid then once the fibroid is removed it leaves a significant raw area behind and suturing that raw area will mean that the blood may get collected over there so personally what i like to do is i if this is the uterus which is over here and this is the site of the broad ligament myoma which has been enucleated and let's say that these are the two folds of the broad ligament which are there over here i will probably just approximate them with one or two interrupted sutures and leave the rest of the gaps open for drainage of the uh, collection if in case there is any i would not like to suture the whole thing behind so for me i would take uh, no i will not suture as my choice of uh, option in this particular case then uh, we move on to the last question would you like to leave a drain so yes it is a dictum to leave a drain behind but again that depends on your hemostasis and in case you feel that your hemostasis is good there is absolutely no bleeding from the raw bed i just approximate the peritoneum with one or two sutures and i may not leave a drain behind but in case there is any doubt about the hemostasis then definitely 
uh, I would like to leave a drain behind. So that's it for these questions. This is now going to be followed up this time in a separate video which I am going to post on the channel as well as on the group. You will find the link in the description box below the YouTube video and if you are part of endogyny training you will find it on the group as well where uh, you will be able to see the actual surgical discussion of this same particular case and you can see the steps that we followed and how we were able to enucleate the myoma safely without any risk of injury to any other factors. So watch out for that video which I am going to post next and again a reminder for those of you who are interested in the discussions please join the discussion group by visiting the website endogynetraining.com. So uh, watch out for the link to the, disc to the actual surgical video in the comment section below this video uh, on YouTube. So thank you so much and uh, please uh, continue to follow and uh, continue to participate in the discussions. Thank you.